It seemed as though every Formula One channel on YouTube had only one thing to talk about during the summer break, which is whether or not Daniel Ricciardo will be leaving McLaren's at season's end. And if so, will he be able to find a team that would want his services for next year? And while the first question is now answered, the second is still left up in the air. And by the end of today's video, it won't be too much of a stretch to say that things are looking dim for the Honey Badger. So, how does Daniel plan on going about choosing his team for next season? Will everything fall into place and he ends up driving for either Haas or Alpine? Or is there another shocking twist to this silly season? Well, let's talk about it then. But before we do, consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss out on our latest uploads. Now that's out of the way, let's get started. It's now been a week since both McLaren and Daniel announced that both parties have mutually agreed to part ways by the end of the 2022 season. And while Daniel is still the latest McLaren driver to win the team a race in the past 10 years, it seems as though that isn't enough for McLaren to continue on with Daniel, which leads to the biggest question now in Daniel's career. Where does the Honey Badger go from here after two abysmal seasons with the Papaya team? Daniel would confirm in a recent interview that competing in a different type of motorsport isn't in his line of sight and that F1 is the only place he would want to be if he does choose to compete next year. If it's anything, it's F1, he told the media at Spa. That's the only place I see myself racing in the near future. So that's something I'm sure of at least what I want. I feel like when you put the helmet on and you drive at 300 kilometers per hour something, it's hard to think about other stuff. There's always an element. That's where I fell in love with motor racing or driving fast was that sense of freedom. You're literally untouchable in those moments in the car. I've always enjoyed that element of it. There was always going to be a lot of noise this weekend, so the build up to the weekend, of course, <laughs> has not been a holiday. But I think in the car, I've driven with a smile and a sense of freedom. That's been cool but I also think that's inevitable. But with that, Daniel would also say that he wants to take his time in choosing the best move for his future, whether it's choosing a team to drive for next season or even walking away. In his words, but I want to see. This weekend's been a bit of a wave and we're into a triple header, so I feel like the next three weeks are going to be relentless. Not necessarily on this topic, but just as a schedule. So I want to get these three under my belt and then see how I feel. I'm not interested in making any quick decisions or certainly nothing emotional. We'll see how it goes, but certainly the objective, if I'm behind a race wheel, is a Formula One car for sure. Since the announcement of the two parties mutually agreeing to part ways, his former team boss at Red Bull, Christian Horner, would come out in support of Daniel, saying that the Honey Badger still is worthy of a spot in Formula One. In his words, It's just very sad. I don't recognize him as the same driver as he was with when he was with us. He's one of the best guys out there. He's definitely got that capability. His confidence has been zapped. We're used to seeing him on the podium, doing shoeys, messing around with that big smile, and we don't see any of that anymore. I hope for him that he finds an opportunity to further his career, because I think Formula One is better off having him in this championship than not. I hope he finds a seat in Formula One. I hope he finds his mojo, because if you think back to some of the races he drove for us, winning the Monaco GP with 50% of the power, he put in some amazing performances. You have to think when he was alongside Seb, when he first came into the team, how he delivered, how close he was obviously with Max as well. We saw how close those guys were. Max has evolved since Daniel left the team, but Daniel, on his day, he was right there. He put in some amazing performances. We were sad to see him leave the team. At the same time, Sky Sports F1 pundit and former Formula One driver himself, Martin Brundle, would support what Christian had to say, saying that he believes that Daniel should have never left Red Bull 
and that he's been on a downward spiral since he left the Milton Keynes team. In his words, he shouldn't have left Red Bull. That's how it looks to me. The Renault move was the wrong move for him. He didn't fancy staying around with what he thought was Team Verstappen, which there was an element of truth in that. So it's just played out badly all the way along. He has lost his mojo a little bit. When I see Daniel starting outside the top 10 and running outside the top 10 all afternoon, that's not him. That's not where he's at. We know he's better than that. I find that painful to watch. I can't imagine how painful it has been for Daniel to be in that car falling backwards through the field. So maybe it's a blessed relief all around and he will come back and show his mettle. Before news broke that Daniel would be leaving the team, reports surfaced that Haas team boss Gunter Steiner tried to get in contact with Daniel just before the Hungarian Grand Prix which came across to most Formula One fans and pundits as a clear sign that the team is considering Daniel as a real candidate to take Mick Schumacher's seat next season. But Gunther would recently squash these rumors when asked on whether or not the team will be targeting Daniel this offseason. To this, Gunther would reply with, Everyone thinks now Danny is available, we have to take Daniel. Maybe we don't want Daniel. Why do you think he has left McLaren? We need to be careful here. It's not just about what we have done, it's about what we can do. We all know who is on the market, and if you're now asking me for the next 15 minutes, have you spoken to this and this guy, either I say no or yes, I speak with everybody. We see what we're going to do. Everybody assumes Mick is not here anymore next year, also that is not true. Everything is open still. We've not made any decisions what we're doing next year with the drivers. Obviously, we are speaking, we're talking, we are informing ourselves. That is my duty towards the team and towards the owner of the team. Another team most fans and pundits think will be Daniel's next destination is Alpine. As we speak right now, discussions between Alpine team boss Atmar Safnauer and the CRB about the legality of Piastri's contract with both McLaren and Alpine. If the outcome does not work to Alpine's favor, it has been reported that the team is interested in creating an all-French driver lineup by signing AlphaTauri's Pierre Gasly, who is still in contract with Red Bull Racing until next season. Although this is still speculative in Christian Horner's eyes, the Red Bull team boss did not say a definitive no on whether or not they would agree to a buyout if Alpine were ever to offer to take Gasly off their hands. And there you have it, guys. So where do you think Daniel will end up next season? Will he still be in the sport? Let us know in the comments section below, and as always, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't.